Hey friends, how's everybody doing this Saturday? All right, so I just came back from seeing uh, The Godfather Coda, The Death of Michael Corleone, Francis Ford Coppola's re-edit of what was once called The Godfather Part 3. And I got some thoughts, and they're, um, spoiler alert, they're all very good, by the way. Uh, first off, Coppola, just a bit of history here, Coppola never wanted to do a third Godfather until they made him an offer he couldn't refuse. And he ran into some struggles during the making of it. Um, one of them, Paramount didn't want to pay Robert Duvall what he wanted for The Godfather Part Three. So the Tom Hagen character, inexplicably, inexplic I, I'm, forget it, I, I can't talk right now. He, he magically dies. And I felt the film slightly suffered because of that. George Hamilton's a great actor. Don't get me wrong. He's a great actor. Uh, but you just have to imagine that that's Tom Hagen. Because that would be pretty much Tom Hagen's role. Probably a bit more fleshed out. And then, of course, during the making, Winona Ryder was supposed to play the Mary Corleone role. And when she arrived on set, she had done two films back-to-back. -back. It was Edward Scissorhands and, I believe, it, uh, Mermaids with uh, Cher. And uh, she was very sick. She was running a very high fever. And the set doctors and everybody, they examined her and they said, she's got to go home. She can't do this. She's got to go home. So Coppola, Coppola was faced with a dilemma. Stop production and recast the film, which would be costly. Or his daughter, who was there in Rome visiting her parents. She, I think she was on break for college. I have no idea. But she was there in Rome, and Coppola said, let's have Sophia do it. Now, I'm going to say I don't think Sophia was bad in the role to begin with. There were some parts that were a bit shaky, but he really wanted this innocent, naive girl. And I think on that front, Sophia did well. She wasn't a trained actress. I mean, and now she's a very good writer-director. You know, all of the you know critics who criticized her for Godfather Part Three were praising her for The Virgin Suicides and Lost in, Trans, uh, Lost in Translation, and now her new film, which is on uh, Apple TV+. Plus. So I don't think she did bad. There were a couple of scenes that I felt were uh, where her acting was not totally up to par. Maybe two or three more takes would have worked. But I always felt Coppola caught it with her when... If you've, if you've seen the film, you know this, so spoiler alert, when... Um, Vincent, Andy Garcia's character, finally tells her to love somebody else. And then she stares at her father, Al Pacino, Michael Corleone, with this sort of hurt, tears streaming down her face in anger. It's a real look, and I felt he caught something there. So I, I, so I never thought Godfather Part Three was a disaster. It was financially successful. It, it was a hit. And, yeah, I just felt it wasn't a part of the other films. Even though I could sit and watch The Godfather, and I could watch The Godfather Part Two as separate films, and I do, and I could watch Godfather Part Two without having watched the first Godfather and feel like I had a well-balanced meal. Godfather Part Three felt like it was, it was in its own universe. It didn't seem like it fit with the other two. And then that's when I read more and more about Coppola and never thought of it as a sequel. He thought of it as an epilogue. In fact, Godfather Part Three was not his original title. He originally was titling it The Death of Michael Corleone, but Paramount said, uh-uh, you got to call it Part Three. Now, this is the third version of, 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 of this film, the third cut of this film. There was the theatrical cut, which has never been available on home video. When it came out on VHS and... Uh, 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 um, in Laserdisc, I believe in the summer of 91. I could be wrong on that. Um, 
that was the final director's cut. And that's the way it's been on DVD. That's the way it's been on Blu-ray. And that has been the version. But he always wanted to go back and rearrange things and tighten things up and make it more of the epilogue that it was supposed to be. So now we have it reissued again. It's coming out on Blu-ray this Tuesday. And he titled it the way he wanted to title it. The Godfather Coda, The Death of Michael Corleone. And I think that is the perfect title. This does feel like an epilogue now. Sort of like a summing up of the first two films. Something s separate, but still a part of that. The opening is different. It doesn't begin with the papal ceremony. In fact, that's not even... Um, they mention it briefly. Uh, it starts with the... With them at... Um, at the church in the back room talking about purchasing uh, um, the Vatican Corporation um, Immobiliare. And then it cuts to the party. And it ends different too. It, it's the same but different, is what I'll say. The same but different. And I felt certain things with Sophia's performance this time around. He edited that a bit. The, the, the main cringeworthy moment of Sophia's performance originally was when Michael tells her to no longer see you know, Vincent. And she goes, no, Dad, and stomps away. It's now just a simple no. And when she makes her speech at the party the first time, everybody sort of criticized that speech. He now has her saying a line right before she gives the speech. And, you know, Daddy, I'm so nervous. You didn't hear that before. And now with that connecting, it works with her the way her speech was. Kind of innocent, sort of helly girl. It totally works. The ending of the film always got to me, but it never got to me the way it did today. Uh, spoiler alert, if you haven't seen got, uh, 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 any version of this movie, stop watching right now. But if you've seen it, you know that at the end of the opera, Mer uh, M Michael Corleone, uh, it, they attempt to assassinate him, but they miss him and they get his daughter, which is the ultimate punishment for Michael. And to the sounds of the intermezzo of Cavalleria Rusticana, which is the opera that Michael's son is making his operatic debut in, if you've seen the film, um, well, sound designer Walter Murch did a brilliant job. Originally, Michael was, uh, Al Pacino was screaming, but he took the sound out. And Al, is, Al Pacino is just holding this you know, face like, you don't know what's going to happen. Is he going to die? And in a sense, he does die right there, even though he's still physically alive. And he lets out this scream. Spoiler alert, if you haven't seen the film yet and you don't want to know, stop watching this now. But in this version, it ends the same way, but Michael doesn't die. Michael doesn't die. He puts on his sunglasses and he fades it out. And Coppola has this beautiful quote at the end about what Cendane means and what it means in Sicilian. And I just saw that quote and I started crying. I really, I never cried at the end of this. I, I was emotional, but I never cried. And I really started to cry when I saw that last shot of Michael and saw the quote about Cendane. And this is going to be my preferred version of of. The movie. Coppola has done re-edits re before. He's got all you know, three versions of Apocalypse Now out there on 4K UHD. Uh, you got the theatrical, which is a great film. You got Apocalypse Now Redux, which is a bit too long, especially the French plantation scene. And there's a scene in there that doesn't quite work. So last year when it came out on 4K, he provided he, uh, a third version called Apocalypse Now the final cut, which is an amalgamation of both versions, but tighter. And the scene that I didn't quite like is no longer in there. 
he did it with The Outsiders, which now The Outsiders, the complete novel, is my preferred version of the movie because the original theatrical version of the film, after I saw the complete novel, I felt like I was only getting parts of a movie. Now I feel like I'm getting the whole picture. And just last year, he issued a new version of The Cotton Club, which I always kind of liked, but I felt it was a bit off. The original theatrical version was a very long two hours and nine minutes. A Cotton Club Encore is longer, but it's a very fast-paced two hours and 20 minutes. And more story, more stuff with Gregory Hines and his brother. That's now my preferred version. This is going to be uh, Godfather Coda, The Death of Michael Corleone, is now my preferred version of Godfather Part 3. Still a bit of a flawed film. I mean, I, and my main gripe all along was Tom Hagen's not in it. And that's because Paramount, like I said, didn't want to pay um, um, Robert Duvall. But I like this portrait of a man who's trying to put the pieces of his life back together again. And it just falls apart in the worst way possible. And also how... how the higher the ladder you climb into the legitimate world, it's even more crooked. It's just as crooked as the illegitimate world. So no matter what, you're never free. So I really like this version a lot, and I encourage you to see it. Uh, if you're not going to make it out to the theater, buy the Blu-ray when it comes out this Tuesday. It's worth owning. Uh, this is going to be my um, preferred version of the movie. Thank you for letting me talk to you this evening. Bye-bye.